Lord said, If ye forgive men their trespasses, thy hev your heavenly Father also will forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may be... Uh, that may may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. <coughs> but you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father, who is in the secret place. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Do not lay up treasures for yourselves on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. <coughs> sisters, we are now uh, about to depart on the journey. We're getting on the train uh, for Pastor. We are on the platform and the train is whistling and steam or whatever it might be, diesel, the electric, whatever, is beginning to um, build up and there's a feeling of we better get on the train or it's going to go without us. And that's exactly how we should feel. Uh, a kind of a, a combination of two things, I think. And here we go. Well, I had to arrange that. It took some time. Well, it's not making it stuff. <laughs> So when we're getting on a train, we have very mixed emotions. Uh, all departure and leaving is, is kind of painful. But we're also very excited because at last we're going to where we want to go. And I think that's how it is with Lent. Uh, if everyone was honest, we have, at the moment, that kind of, um, the prisoner had his last meal feeling, you know. You can see about it. To read that cliche in the papers. And we're saying bye to all sorts of things we like to eat and to do. Um, and that's like getting on the train. Uh, but the important thing is where we're going. The important thing isn't the, uh, the leaving behind. The important thing is, is the destination. So I'd like to just pinpoint probably two things about Great Lake. I mean, you all know it, you've done it before, I've done it before. So what are the words of the priests anyway in the homily? It's largely to remind, it's not to like, uh, it's not like telling people things they don't already know, but it's to stir up devotion and love. That's why literally the priests preach it to the converted, because we can be very low on love, we can be very low on devoutness even though we do many things for God, so we think. So Lent is a time to um, change. And there's two things that the Gospel points out to us. And the first thing is forgiveness. And in the Orthodox faith and experience, uh, we begin the fast uh, not even thinking about ourselves, but thinking about each other and our relations with each other. So that starts us off with an understanding that our fasting and prayer isn't some kind of, uh, it's not exactly like working out where you're just doing something to improve yourself. 
uh, but it's primarily uh, ordered towards our relations with God and with each other. Because if anything, sin is always a going off on our own. It's a refusal to get on that train and to say, I'll do it my way, I've got my own ideas and my own thoughts. I'll reach salvation, I love Jesus in my own way, and that's good enough. And you know, the Lord has not left us to ourselves. He has brought us together in one body in the church. He has united us to the degree that we allow that to happen. And particularly during Lent, there is this sense of boarding together, getting on board. Now you might say, isn't the whole of life like that? Of course it is. But as St. Benedict said, few of us have the, the heroic energy to spend our whole life Focus on God as much as we should. And that's very sad, but it's the reality. And so the church gives us this period of 40 days, which is like a tithe out of the whole year, where we set aside other things, including good things. Um, uh, but before we even do that, we have this forgiveness. Forgiveness is not about saying who was right and who was wrong. It's saying, forgive me. And that's a very orthodox understanding. It's very different from what the culture around us says. The culture around us says that um, we do a little of this and a little of that, and I owe you something, and now you owe me. People use that cliche, you owe me, or I owe you. And this has nothing to do with Christianity. In order to be true Christian, to be orthodox, not just in name only, we have to develop a heart which is very big, which is like the soil almost, that bears everything up, that, that, that forgives everything. Not about justice. And above all, we don't want to impose our own will. It's very different. It's very different from our American, or for that matter, post-Reformation English culture, where it's all about me, it's all about imposing my will, being this individual. Uh, in the early centuries, that was not Christianity. Quite the opposite, actually. Uh, and in orthodoxy, it's, it's not the way it is. So in order to get on this train, we first of all uh, are reconciled to each other. We ask forgiveness. We say, God forgives. We're not standing in judgment on ourselves or each other. And the other thing that we hear about in the Gospel is the fast. Jesus assumes that you're going to fast. So anybody who says Christians don't fast, I don't know what Bible they read. I don't know where they come from. I think they want to make up something that suits themselves. Because the Lord just says, when you fast, He doesn't even say you should fast. He says, when you fast, don't make it obvious, because if you do, people will admire you, and so you've had your reward, which is kind of not good, because uh, that reward isn't worth very much. So what does fasting mean? Uh, well, we know what it means in terms of food and drink, but it also has other meanings, as we know from the Old Testament prophets. We have to fast from words which are harmful. We have to fast from actions that are harmful. Uh, we also we need to enter into the secret place that the Lord Jesus just spoke about. We need to enter into the secret place which is primarily in the heart. We can't do that if we're forever on the internet. It's not that the internet is necessarily sinful, There's, there is bad stuff out there which we can get drawn into very, very easily. But the same is true in, in, with books and other forms of, of media. <coughs> Uh, but we know that it is very, very addictive. It changes our brain patterns in certain ways. And if we are like that, we cannot enter into the secret place of the heart. And that's why Father Jacob used to say every year, though you should fast, we, all of us, should fast from the internet and from computers, except insofar as it's our work, obviously. In that sense, it's, it's, it's God's will. But we... we and how you, how you do that, I mean, it's a matter of, a matter of personal choice, you know, nobody has to do it. Um, if you really want to keep up with certain things, you might say uh, on Facebook, I'm going to be, I'm going to be re on retreat for two months until Pascha. Pray for me, I'll pray for you, God bless you. Uh, or you might reduce it to a minimum, you might just do a little 
uh, or watch the news and those things that some of us like to do, just to do it at one period so that it doesn't sort of spill into other parts of the day. So I'm not saying how we should all do this, but we need to be mindful, each in our own way, of creating that space in which we can enter, uh, that it's not filled with all sorts of nonsense. Lent is a time of spiritual struggle, so let's, let's do this together. Uh, let's get to all the services, and, unless we cannot. Because it's in the services we do this, we do it together. We hear the words. This is not self-help. We hear the words of hope and of redemption. Let's get on this train now and, um, and, and enter into the, the joy of the Lord, for he is good and loves mankind, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of God. Thank <laughs> you.